In this video, we're going to take this footer component and turn it into a fully responsive layout. We are going to be using the latest Figma feature, which is the wrap auto layout for this workflow. And if you'd like to get more context on what this feature is and would like to go over the basics of this feature, make sure to go and check the video in the description where I go over this feature in detail. So as you can see, we are using this component across our pages. We have many instances basically on every page just to make sure we don't mess anything up. I'm going to create an instance of this, which means alt and drag, and then I'm going to detach this and turn it again into a component which means we have created another component, right? I'm going to rename this component to footer section underscore responsive. And now we are ready to start working on this and making sure that it's actually responsive. So here's the thing. In one of my previous videos, I also went over variables and how you can use them to standardize your design. So if you want to go over what variables are, definitely go and check out my channel. We are going to be taking advantage of this simple system that we have created through a uh, variables. So the first step would be to do this. This is a footer container. So this is actually where you contain all these elements. And as we know, uh, on this website, we are using a 12 column system. And we have also established a variable system for this, which means that we save these widths of these column elements into these properties, right? These width properties, I'm sorry, these variables. So this means that uh, this container is of course gonna have a max width. First of all, let me set this to fill container to actually start making this responsive. So that would be fill container. And then I'm going to set a max width to this element. This means that we want to make this element as wide as possible, but not wider than 12 columns, basically. So under width, I'm going to go to this drop down with this footer container still selected. I'm going to go for this drop down and add a max width. This max width is going to be 1152, but I am not going to be typing this in manually. We are of course going to take advantage of our variables and I'm going to again use a drop down, apply a variable and this variable is going to be width and that's going to be 12 because that's 12 columns. So now this footer container is fills its parent element. However, up to only 1152, which is the maximum width for our grid system, right? This is 1152. Um, now, when we actually resize this, you can see that uh, this element is basically adjusting its width according to the width of the parent element, but only up until the 1152 value, right? Simple enough. So that's step one. Then step two would be actually start preparing all these elements to be responsive. And as you can see, I already I already switched this over to RAM. So we have to reset this. You're going to be starting with this. If you follow one of my previous episodes of designing a website in Figma, we ended up with basically a horizontal auto layout, right? Not vertical, but a horizontal, right? So we're going to have this probably. And now here's the, here's the thing. So this fills up its whole width as well, but we want to make sure that when it's smaller than a certain value, then we want to make sure that it wraps. So let's go to wrap. And because each of these elements is set to hug, this means that we are not going to be able to make them smaller than they are. So this is kind of the minimum width on its own thanks to the fact that if you set a hug contents settings, it basically sets the elements with according to the child element. So if you're confused about fill container and hack contents and what that means, go and check out my videos on fill container, hack contents and fixed width. I also did a video on that. So definitely go check it out if you wanna uh, have some more uh, context. So this means that I am now able to do this. If I resize this element, it's going to be stacked below each other, right? Like this. However, the spacing of these elements, and right now we are only looking at first row basis. Spacing of these elements looks weird. Uh, so I am going to actually go to the auto layout settings and under uh, the vertical gap between rows, I'm going to type in 24. Or actually I could apply a variable, which I don't have yet, but I am going to create. So local variables, 
spacing and then um, looks like I'm gonna have to change primitives so m that's gonna be 24 for now this is possible we're gonna change this but essentially what I'm doing here is I'm setting this to 24 but I'm using my variable system so apply variable and then spacing medium Okay, so that should ensure that we now get this behavior right here, which starts to stack below each other when you change the sizes. So the first section is responsive. Now let's actually start working on the second row where we have all these links. So this is a row two that contains three auto layouts that in turn contain all these links, which means that looking at this, I think I'm gonna set a max width for all of these to a specific value. So this is gonna be fill container. However, I'm gonna use max width. So width, drop down menu, and I'm selecting all these three columns, right? So width, add max width, apply variable, and this is going to be 270. We basically connected the width to a variable. So now when we actually resize this, you can see how it fills the container, right? It fills the container, but uh, only up to a width of 270, right? So that's almost what we need. When we scale this down too much, this is kind of a weird behavior. So what we're going to do is make sure that when we press enter and then enter all these elements are first of all set to fill container, that's fine. But then we're going to have to set a minimum width for these elements, these columns, right? So under width again, I'm going to add a min width. You can see that we already have a max width, but I'm going to add a minimum width. And this minimum width is again going to be a variable. And I think, I think we could do two columns. So we essentially have three columns where you get a maximum width and a minimum width. So now if we actually go ahead and set the row number two to a wrap auto layout, meaning the elements are going to be stacked below each other, we should get this behavior. That seems more natural. So let's try this. And it seems like we're getting the behavior that we need. This is awesome. So let me just check and make sure that we actually get a bigger spacing between these elements vertically. But I'm going to use again a variable for that. So let me go to local variables and then under primitives, I'm going to create a new variable that's going to be a number and that's going to be L. And I think I'm going to make that 40 and then I'm going to go to spacing and create a new variable number and that's that's going to be large and I'm going to connect the large value to primitives L. So this is now set up in variables. So I'm going to go to auto layout for row number two and then I'm going to apply a variable for the spacing for the vertical spacing. It's going to be large. You cannot see it because of the question mark, but it's going to be 40. Right. So now when I resize this, I should get more apparent spacing between these elements. Right. As you can see right here, that's 40. Um, and this makes more sense, right, than the previous layout kind of. So I think we're almost there. I think we need to make one adjustment and that would be probably setting a, this to fill container because I don't like when this happens. Now, 236 points is probably, or pixels, that is probably a value that you're never going to see on a mobile screen. But just to make this fully responsive, let me try and make this, you know, even optimized for this extreme case that's going to be full container and then center. So we have a center text. So now when we resize this, we get this behavior. But now thinking about this, I'm probably just going to set this to fill container, but add a minimum width, which in this case, I think could be like 170. So again, let's go to width and minimum width. And that's going to be variable two. So let's try and see what this looks like. It now stacks like this. So I think we're almost there. I just don't like how this is centered, how this text is centered. But in this case, we need this to be centered. So I think we could do a workaround where we set this to left aligned. So first of all, we could keep it this way, right? That's option one keep it this way like this or we could also set a maximum width so we have a minimum width we could also do a maximum width and that could be let's apply a variable that could be like three 
color, right? So we would get a maximum width and a minimum width while being fill container all at the same time and aligned to the left. Let's try this out. And here's the behavior that we get. And honestly, I do like, I like this. I like how this stacks below each other. And let me just add a small or medium spacing to left and right so that we get this. And yeah, I think we're good to go. I think this footer is now fully responsive so we can actually reuse this on our pages. We can consider this to be a newer version of this footer. So simply when we need to create a mobile version for this website or a tablet version, we can just copy an instance of this. This would be for desktop, this would be for tablet, and then this would be for mobile. So you can see that using the variable system and the wrap all the way out feature in Figma. You can see how extremely easy this is. Create fully responsive layouts, speed up your, your workflow mass. So yeah, that's how you create a responsive footer. In the upcoming episodes, I'm probably gonna focus on adding more variables to our variable system for this website. So if you'd like to learn how to design a website in Figma, definitely stay tuned. Right now with these new features like variables and the responsive all the way out, this is gonna become really interesting, I think, because we're gonna be able to create more, some more complex elements with responsive behavior and you know connect all of that into a variable system. I think I'm really excited about this update and I think uh, there's a lot to learn uh, with these new features. So thanks for tuning in. Go and check out my previous videos on auto layout and responsive auto layout. Go and watch the series of the, on designing a website in Figma. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.